Champaign County Agriculture Today with your host, Dennis Riggs. Hello and welcome to Champaign County Agriculture Today. My name is Dennis Riggs, your host for the next few minutes as we talk about agriculture. Now, don't turn that dial quite yet because guess what? If you have not planned your vacation this year or next year, you're going to want to tune into this program because I've got some great ideas for you. Have you ever heard of tourism? Sure, we all have had that. You know, do you go to a Mammoth Cave, uh, maybe some of the Lincoln sites in Springfield? But how about agritourism? Well, you know, that's two words put together that I'm sure you're both aware of. Uh, tourism, of course, going out and see things you've never seen before. And agriculture, of course, where our food, fiber, and fuel comes from. We're going to put those two things together today and, and explain to you why a uh, vacation using agritourism may be just the thing your family needs to get connected here in central Illinois. Two excellent guests on the program today. We're going to talk about the agritourism. Our guest for today is Randy Graham. Randy is uh, with Curtis Orchards out here just south of Champaign. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you, Dan. And then John Pike. John's with the University of Illinois Extension Service and does a, a lot of good things for uh, uh, keeping people involved in what this agritourism is all about. And John, I think we'll, they we'll just start it that way. You know, whenever you talk about a subject, you're going to have to think about what does it actually mean. Uh, I explained that agritourism may be just agriculture and, and tourism. Is that simply what the definition is, or do you have a better definition of agritourism? Well, agritourism is definitely a blend of the of the two major industries uh, in in Illinois. Uh, as we look at it uh, in, in extension and the producers that we deal with, basically agritourism in many cases is a marketing tool as much as it is any, anything else. Uh, anything that uh, in the way of a marketing activity that helps to bring the consumer to the farm or a rural area to buy a product or a service that was produced in that area or, or on a farm is basically what we're talking about. So the pumpkin patches, the orchards, uh, wineries are, are a good example, even some bed and breakfast, those types of uh, businesses are uh, the root of uh, agritourism in, in Illinois. John, I, I apologize. I need to get a little background here. Uh, give us your background as far as uh, who you work for and uh, what brings you here in central Illinois. Are you a hometown guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. I, <clears throat> I'm from, uh, some people up here refer to it as the suburbs of Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> Marion, uh, I work out of the Carbondale Center, and uh, I'm a regional uh, economic development educator, but I specialize mainly in value-added agriculture and special crop marketing so uh, I travel across the majority of the state throughout the the year uh, working with individual producers and, and involved in a lot of the fruit and vegetable and specialty crop meetings uh, and agritourism promotions <coughs> uh, to uh, help farmers uh, and uh, specialty crop producers uh, improve their marketing uh, strategies with agritourism as a component. Now this is a function of the University of Illinois or or something different? Is yes, it, it, Univer University of Illinois Extension is, is who I work for so that that gives me the uh, uh, opportunity to go out and, and meet with uh, many producers and be involved with these meetings on an on official capacity. Uh, I am, am also involved uh, as a board member and a past president of the Agriculture and Tourism Partners of Illinois, which serves as the Agritourism uh, Association in, in the state. Okay. Well, uh, with that said, a lot of activity in agritourism and probably uh, around here in East Central Illinois, when we think of agritourism, uh, the, the poster child for uh, a success story is Curtis Orchard right south of Champaign. And with us today is Randy Graham. Uh, Randy, uh, you've been involved with the orchard. Give us a little bit of background of, of, of where you came from and, and how you got involved with Curtis Orchard. Okay. I actually grew up in Vermilion County in Danville. And uh, I don't have an ag background, except that my best friend, starting in junior high, was uh, interested in farming, and he was going to be a farmer, and so I became his hired man. So I did everything from walking beans to splitting firewood to grooming cattle for the show at the county fair to you name it. And so that's probably where I, my love of agriculture came from, and, uh, and he is a farmer today. I came here to the uh, University of Illinois and uh, did not major actually in agriculture, but was in engineering and biochemistry and uh, eventually did get a degree from here. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes longer it than takes others, right? It takes a little right? longer. <laughs> but uh, uh, I met uh, my wife shortly thereafter, uh, uh, Debbie Curtis, and uh, 
married her, and it was at the very beginnings of Curtis Orchard. Her, her dad had decided that uh, he wanted to use the small acreage they had to start an orchard. He didn't know anything about orchards, and uh, sometimes that may be the best, the best thing. I mean, if you knew everything that you knew a little later, you might not start one. But uh, he was a professor at Parkland College at the time, and uh, as the fledgling orchard began, he needed somebody to manage it while he continued to teach and fund the project. Mm -hmm. So I came on board full time uh, in 1983 which was about the third year that they actually had any kind of a crop to sell. So mm -hmm. we had very little in the way of buildings, uh, processing equipment. Uh, it was started from the ground up by him and, and his wife, Joyce. And uh, then in about 1994, my wife and I uh, bought into the business, became partners. So I've spent my entire career managing the orchard. Well, we have a picture here. Our slide number one uh, is, is talking about Curtis Orchard. Uh, it looks like kind of a family affair there. So uh, tell us what we see in this picture uh, that uh, this, explains Curtis Orchard. This, is, this was taken about 20 years ago. Uh, that's Paul uh, with the hat. And uh, Paul is now 74, but still very active, very involved in the orchard. It's me on the ladder with uh, my third child. We have five kids all together. The little girl in the front there, uh, on the ground, she is uh, about to graduate from the University of Illinois in agribusiness. So uh, ultimately, I think she will join the business, although she's going to take a few years off and go, into, go to Paraguay with the Peace Corps and teach uh, honeybee production and soybean production down there for a while. She wanted to give back a little bit before she came on board. Well, as with many farms that we see in the area, there's a nice history there, the, a multi-generational spread, and now you're working on third, possibly fourth generation. I know Paul's father was involved in agriculture very heavily as well. So that's, it's good to see that. That's a, that's a historic picture there, wasn't it? Yes. In fact, uh, the baby that I'm holding has just been accepted to the U of I okay. as a junior, and she's in horticulture. So. And I'm sure you've taken some new pictures since then. Yes, we've okay. taken a few new okay, pictures. Okay, very good. <laughs> well, of course, this whole idea of, of agritourism, uh, about whether or not people can be excited about it, whether it be something that they can enjoy, uh, John, that's what you have to deal with every day in, in your work. Um, why should people even consider agritourism as a destination for their time and their dollars? Well, I think it's it's an innovative and, and something different to do that has a lot of interest uh, to a lot of folks, and it's something different than they normally do. Uh, <clears throat> to get back to nature, a lot of times if you look at uh, visiting the pumpkin patch or the, the orchard in the fall of the year to uh, be involved in some of the different activities, whether it's a, a hay ride or uh, some of the places have trampolines and, uh, you know, just walking out through the orchards and it's kind of a back to nature type thing that uh, there, there's a good value for the investment in that in that trip compared to a lot of the other things that uh, that folks can do and along with the experience that they can have and the good times and kind of a family bonding experience they can bring home some good Illinois grown produce whether it's uh, the bushel of peaches or some apples uh, you know pumpkins squash uh, a lot of different things and, and produce that that can be brought home whether it's decorative or or edible uh, it, it does uh, provide a uh, you know a lot of enjoyment for those uh, for those families tell me about the scope of this of this business of agritourism I know you travel the state of Illinois uh, are there you know big operations small how, how small can you be tell me give me some examples of a small operation and what they do <clears throat> that that's very interesting because I, I find that the agritourism is sort of scale neutral with, with the size of the operation and and the fact that there's a lot of folks that are involved in agritourism uh, at very limited sized acreages and real really innovative type of activities and things that they do on the farm and then you've got some uh, some of the larger farming operations and more traditional row cropping operations even in the right place with the right uh, family mix and, and people on staff uh, you know can develop a pumpkin patch or uh, uh, you know hunting is is something that that is something that uh, plays a big role in agritourism in, in Illinois for deer turkey waterfowl those those types of things that draws a lot of people from all over the country uh, to Illinois because of our uh, tremendous natural resources we have here so we've got a lot of different components of uh, agritourism uh, in Illinois and and that's something that it adds variety to the consumer 
consumer and, and uh, you know with the big population centers that we have uh, with Chicago especially but uh, even uh, cities like Champaign, Decatur, uh, uh, Springfield I'm I'm always surprised that uh, the number of people that live in those settings that are surrounded by corn and beans and and you know agriculture of, of all uh, aspects and uh, they they tend to be three four five generations removed from that mm -hmm. so just the ability to be able to v visit a farm and take their kids there or the grandkids they can kind of re relive some of their past experiences when they were younger and visiting grandpa's farm or uncle harry's farm or or, or whatever it uh, it might be so there's a lot of different uh, you know value aspects for the consumers and that that creates opportunities for the the producers and the farm owners too because while there's a lot of pumpkin patches and a lot of wineries and you know fill in the blank whatever type of agritourism a farm or attraction there is all of them are, are unique. It's not like having uh, chain restaurants that are the same in every town that you go to. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Curtis Orchard operation, uh, you know, is a wonderful place to go, uh, and a lot of people go there. But at the same peop at the same time, people will go and visit other orchards in different parts of the state, or you know, throughout the area that operate at different scales, and some of them have a different, uh, you know, unique experience. And that experience is what people are going and vi making these farm visits for, as much as the produce uh, or the, you know, whatever the product it is that they would bring back. So that experience is something that adds tremendous value. We're going to give Randy a chance to talk about that experience in just a second. I've got a question that's burning right now. When a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of our, our listeners today, are thinking about uh, going to a farm for an experience, they think of a dude ranch or livestock. Can you have an experience in a non-livestock setting in Illinois? <laughs> yes, and, and what I find is that most of the agritourism operations that we have operating in Illinois are, are uh, not anything like a, a dude ranch type situation. Uh, the farms are very uh, practical in most cases uh, as far as what is involved with the particular production that's that's going on on that farm, whether it's uh, apples or peaches or pumpkins. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, incorporating some type of an experience, a hayride, for, for example, is something that uh, tractors and wagons are something that you'd find on the farm. It's not the screaming eagle like you'd go to Six Flags and ride, but, you know, that type of activity on the farm is something that can get the folks out around and kind of see and provide some opportunities for the for the farmers to educate the public in just exactly what it is that they're doing and the different aspects that are involved with the production of uh, the, the different uh, livestock or produce that their crops that they're growing on those farms. Okay. Well, I know that there's there's in part of your job is keeping this all organized and all put together. Uh, we have a website, which is our slide number three that we're going to bring up. T give us an idea how somebody at home uh, pops on the internet and they can find out more experiences like this through this website. Tell us what we're yeah, looking at there. This website that uh, folks are looking at is the website for the Agriculture and Tourism Partners of, of Illinois, which is the Agritourism Association in the state. And on this site, uh, www.agfund.com, mm -hmm. uh, folks can uh, look at the different agritourism offerings in different sections of the state. Down in the lower right-hand corner of the, of the state, that's the state map that's kind of cut off, you can click on the different regions of the state, which uh, co are coordinated with the regional offices of tourism mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And within those sites, you can s search by region on what it is that your activity might be, or if you're just looking for something to do, uh, there's there's different categories for wineries, uh, orchards, uh, far farmers markets, even, and that that's something that we haven't touched on. We've talked a lot about farm visits, but you know. The the farmers markets and attracting customers and creating those experiences in the farmers markets are, is, is an important aspect of, of agritourism too but uh, this site allows the consumer to actively get on there and, and search and find out uh, what different attractions are in their area close to home or, or say uh, someone from Champaign is headed uh, to down south for the uh, the uh, vacation or something. Mm -hmm. Well, you can search in other regions of the state if you're going to stop over in a certain area and kind of see what it is that that there is to do. Uh, maybe off of the beaten path that would be different. And you know, I know the young kids. The uh, my, my nieces uh, th they enjoy going to uh, farms and visiting different things with me on on occasion that uh, aren't. Uh, 
a, the, the traditional retail shop or, or some type of a franchise type thing. So I think kids, uh, you know, that's a very important aspect that we have to kind of pull together things that we can have a pretty unique offering. For and they a, have fun. Yeah, they, they have fun and they're having just as much fun doing that as they would at Disney World there in a lot go. of cases. And for mom and dad, it's a lot cheaper wow. to go to the great pumpkin <laughs> patch <laughs> than, than it is to Disney. Less money, so, less time right. to get there. Yeah. That's, that's it's all a matter thing. of perspective. Well, let's go back to Randy for just a second. I know out at uh, just locally here at, at Curtis Orchard, there's a lot of things to do. We're going to go to slide number six, and uh, what that's going to show us is some of the things that are happening outside. Uh, I'm sorry, inside at, at Curtis Orchard. Uh, let's pop this up, and Randy, give us a little bit of an idea of some of the experiences we'll get there. Well, over the years, we've developed our store, so we have a number of products there, such as uh, apple butter, preserves, jellies, popcorns. A number of gift items and a whole area focused on kids uh, with wooden puzzles and so forth. Uh, we make apple cider on mm -hmm. our premises and that's a very popular product and they can also buy our produce in the store if they don't want to go out and pick. Uh, you know, we kind of started as a U-Pick operation. Well, this, this looks like a train car, <laughs> a railroad car in there. That's What's our, going on? That's our processing facility, uh -huh. and that shows our grading line. Also shows some of our cider tanks, and to the to the far upper right is the uh, cider press. Mm -hmm. So that's where all of our fruit is processed, packaged, and it's all sold right there on our farm. So. This is something that a typical farm, like a corn and soybean farm, there'd be nothing like this. So this is very unique to the to the orchard farming operation. Right. Yeah. Our farm is very, very different from row crop operations and a whole different learning curve as far as uh, growing those products. And then this this particular, oh, you're not showing that. Well, right. that's all right. We've got, we've got a good memory. We'll remember it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's any little crop that you want to grow, be it uh, raspberries or uh, apples, pumpkins, each has its own learning curve with it and its own set of challenges. So I was just, that was just exactly where I was headed. What challenges have you uh, entitled, I'm, I'm sure, you encountered uh, because you started out learning in your agricultural experience, corn, soybeans, it sounds like the more traditional crops. Uh, did you learn by the seat of your pants? Did you read in the book? How did you find out about all these different crops? Well, pretty much by the seat of our pants, but uh, <laughs> also there's a lot of uh, extension specialists which are you know and you know like John who's on the marketing side and there's also production specialists and they are just tremendously valuable resource to to us and uh, I have one advantage of being right next to the University of Illinois so uh, a lot of these crops are are so um, intensive in their research I mean they're still learning how do you handle disease and insects we do a lot of projects jointly with the University of Illinois uh, so that they can put their research into a commercial setting. The advantage to us, of course, is we get the information first. <laughs> so it's been really nice to have that partnership going mm -hmm. so we can learn better how to uh, produce good sound crops that uh, are marketable and, and what's going to work in our area and what won't work in our area. Now, now, as a consumer coming out and viewing this whole operation and, and say they know just a little bit, maybe they've got an apple tree in their backyard or they, they grow a couple of tomato plants in their garden, um, are they able to converse with you as a farmer and, and learn more? Or do you ever give tips or answer questions out on your farm? Yeah, we get asked quite a few questions uh, about our operation and uh, some things translate to the home fairly easily and then other things don't. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of knowledge that you gain over years of experience that it's it's a little bit hard to just transfer to somebody in a conversation you know pruning is a perfect example you know the kind of pruning we do would scare most people you know to see that much wood come out of their trees but you know over time you learn what you need to take out and what you need to leave in and, and what works best and what's going to give you the best product but yeah we talk to people all the time and part of our mission is education and we have about 7,000 kids come to the farm every year on school tours and a big part of that tour is education as far as pollination honeybees uh, how we produce apples how we how we process we take them into the processing area and they see how grading occurs how cider is made so the kids come away with a real educational experience and then frequently we'll see them uh, a few days or weeks later uh, dragging their parents by the hand and and explaining word for word everything <laughs> they heard you know that this is where they grade the apples and you see what that lady's doing you know this is what she's doing and it's really it's really fun to see because you see that your efforts really do 
have an impact and they really stick with people. And, and kids are probably the, the, the best like sponges of you know, soaking it all in. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that makes uh, agritourism unique is that it's entertainment with a purpose. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's entertainment that also educates and also, as John said, reconnects people with the farm. Less mm -hmm. than 2% of the population lives on a working farm nowadays. That's 98 plus percent of the population that is completely disconnected, mm -hmm. or at least recently disconnected. So for a lot of people, like John said, it brings back memories, but for a lot of people, it's a first time experience. You know, they've never seen a pumpkin on a vine. Mm -hmm. And they'll go out there, and, and sometimes they'll come back and they'll find me and they'll say, I didn't know those vines could grow <laughs> 30 feet long out there. You they, know? they always don't grow in those big cardboard containers <laughs> right. that you see in front of the stores. Uh, that's not it. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, it's fascinating to me after all these years to go out and see that that pumpkin vine can grow a foot in a day, you know, mm -hmm. and your customers go out there and I mean, it's really staggering for them to, to see that plant that just covers a huge amount of, of square footage or to see the apple trees and the, the different varieties that are grown and that there's a seasonality to things and there's a season for this variety of apple and a season for that variety. A lot of people have lost perspective because they can go into a grocery store and buy a shiny apple with a sticker on it any time of the year and they don't have the concept that that particular variety here in Champaign-Urbana has a specific two or three or four week season. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that that introduces a whole new set of problems, the seasonality idea. Um, what happens to Curtis Orchard when there's snow drifts, you know, four feet tall and the wind's blowing in the in January and February? Uh, does it just slow down or uh, what do you do in those periods of the, of the year? Well, the business has gotten to the size now where there's always work to be done. Uh, we spend a lot of our winter months uh, doing our taxes. We have about 100 employees. We have to get all the W-2s out for them. We have to do inventory. Uh, we go to gift shows. We go to winter meetings uh, for production and marketing and management, things like that. If there's a project that we have in store for the store, then we'll launch into that project in the winter time. Our season is from late uh, July until about the middle of December every year. Mm -hmm. The actual open close date floats a little bit depending on our mood <laughs> or, our or, the <laughs> or the weather <laughs> but uh, basically we're open you know roughly half of the year and then close to the public the other half of the year but that half, half of the year that we're closed we're very very busy uh, planning for the next season mm -hmm. you know it's sort of like any large scale event because we we have about 160,000 visitors in our season mm -hmm. so in order to handle that volume of people you always have to be thinking about what do I need to change to streamline, say, the flow of people or to make it easier for people to get around or safer. Uh, this year we expanded our parking area. Mm -hmm. So all those kind of things are best done in the off season. John, we've heard some great uh, ideas here from Randy and what's going on locally. Let's let's open that up across the state. Um, what other areas, uh, what other uh, agritourism sites are there like Curtis Orchard and other areas too? Or give us some sampling of some different things around the state of Illinois. Yes, I'd, I'd say probably within a, a county or two, any any consumer in Illinois would be close to a, to an orchard where they could go and and get uh, apples and peaches and, and different types of things. The while the apples and the and the produce is going to have some similarity, the uh, the experience that goes along with that visit is going to vary. So the, so they're widely varied. There, there's orchards all over the state, uh, but the uh, uh, their offerings as far as the experience uh, vary, and that kind of adds some variety to the things. We also have uh, a good established number of, uh, of wineries around the state and while the wineries wouldn't necessarily be a family visit uh, you know for uh, couples or uh, you know a group of friends and that's a, a very popular getaway with some of the wine trails and, and tours that we have I, I'm from uh, southern Illinois and we have a good concentration of, of wineries down there I think there's <clears throat> up to 22 or 23 just in, a, in about four counties around my home area and uh, you know it's amazing about the uh, the number of people that visit those and you think about people coming just locally but I've been to some of those uh, events that they had on the weekends and I've counted 11 12 uh, 13 state 
uh, license oh, plates. Really? Okay. Yeah. So th these types of activities aren't something that's just drawing off of the off the local uh, uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. People uh, in operations like Curtis's, uh, you've got the great pumpkin patch down in the in the Arthur area, and and the wineries in, in, in uh, Tanner's Orchard over around Peoria. Some of the more established, uh, bigger uh, uh, attractions, they're they're pulling in customers from you know several states away in, in a lot of cases. So I've got another website I want to bring up because I think this will kind of pull this all <coughs> together. We uh, we've got slide number four we're going to show here, and this is going to tell about some different. Uh, uh, resource basically of where you can go. Explain what people can find by going to this site. Yes, th this is a, a page off of the uh, agritourism uh, website with University of Illinois Extension and it uh, it highlights the various uh, pumpkin patches and strawberry, uh, blueberry, uh, uh, and orchard uh, attractions that are uh, listed on the various extension sites too so there's s several different uh, ways that you can get to this information and that's what we like to do between the agritourism association the specialty growers association uh, the, and the different uh, extension sites uh, like to have several different uh, points that that direct the consumer to Illinois uh, farms and, and Illinois products and I think that's working but fairly well we're always looking for ways to do things better but uh, I think we've got a good network of, pr of producers and resource providers in the university systems and the different associations that have worked well together to, to sort of help promote uh, as, as the uh, grape and wine mm -hmm. uh, council and, and those types of things do so uh, a, lot, a lot of different opportunities out there for folks. I've got one more picture I've got to get in here on Curtis Orchard our slide number eight uh, I want to pop this up for just a second Randy we just got a couple of of seconds here to talk about it. Um, our slide number eight here will show a wide variety of things happening. Just give us a quick thumbnail sketch there. Well, you can see the pony rides going on there and the kids at the petting zoo uh, going through some of our mazes. We have corn maze. We also made a maze out of snow fence. Uh, we've got some inflatable slides, got a little toddler play area in the foreground. Uh, I think one thing appealing about agritourism is there's something for everyone in the family. There are fair, very few entertainment options that appeal to everyone in the family. You go to a movie, the kids want to see one film, parents maybe want to go to another. So that's one thing that's really unique about agritourism is uh, everyone has fun there. We have a restaurant, we have a bakery, so dad can go eat a sandwich or a donut and you know mom can shop in the store, the kids can play on the playground, something for everyone. Isn't that great? And you know what's amazing about it, and John, how many sites are there in Illinois? Give me a give me a quick number. Any idea? <clears throat> we we did a compilation about six or seven years ago, and came up with with about 1,100 different sites uh, that were involved in producing ag products that could be for sale. And they were, some of them were very small, some of them were very large. But uh, you know, there, there's hundreds of different sites and, and offerings that uh, that people can enjoy around El throughout Illinois. Absolutely a great destination for people. Randy, John, thank you so much for coming and sharing that information with us today. I hope this will spark people on to to want to go out and, and visit your site specifically or, or the other sites around Illinois. And we'll hope you tune in again next time because once again, as you can see, we have lots to talk about here on Champaign County Agriculture Today. I'm your host, Dennis Riggs. Thanks for listening. Champaign County Agriculture Today is brought to you by Champaign County Farm Bureau.